My interview with Heath Stocks lasted nearly an hour. At times, the man who killed his entire family became emotional, recounting the sexual abuse he suffered and how he says its effects influenced his actions that he regrets every day. Heath Stocks eagerly steps into a conference room at the Tucker Maximum Security Prison, unshackled with ADC number 110429 stamped on his shirt. The 43-year-old inmate has been behind bars for 23 years after pleading guilty to killing his mother, father, and sister. How often do you think back to January 17th, 1997? Uh, it's... It's hard not to um, think about it every day because I'm surrounded by the outcome of the events that led me to be here. Stocks knows he may spend the rest of his life behind these walls, but blames, in a way, his former scout leader for being here. Stocks was one of several boys sexually abused by Boy Scout leader and former Lone Oak Man of the Year, Jack Walls. Walls is currently serving a life sentence in prison as well. His conviction came after Stocks admitted to killing his own family. He was probably the worst pedophile in Arkansas history to use the Boy Scouts to groom and prey on kids. I was arrested for crimes that happened solely because I had tried to end my abuse. Stocks says prison is lonely, but he's kept up with the news especially recent reports of the Boy Scouts organization going bankrupt while facing hundreds of sexual abuse claims. This is a history of abuse that goes back to the very beginning. It's, I think it's very important for, for us as a society to look at what happens to kids. You know, broken kids grow up to be broken adults. Do you have an animosity or an anger toward the Boy Scouts organization? No. The, the organization didn't abuse me. Um, the organization itself has benefited countless young men. Stocks says Walls abused him hundreds of times, from age 9 or 10 up until he was arrested for his family's murders at age 20. Is there anything you would want to say to Jack Walls if you had the chance? <sighs> Probably um, that I forgive you because that's the only thing that's allowed me to survive with what's happened mentally. I wish that he would be willing to step forward and say what led him to abuse kids, because I don't believe that we're going to be able to resolve this issue of sexual predators and in institutions preying on kids until we understand what shapes them into who they are. After two decades behind bars, Stocks holds out hope that his sentence can be reduced. He says the combination of the abuse and his parents' reluctancy to allow him to leave the scouts traumatized him, prompting tragic results. It's, uh, it's so hard to explain to people and help them understand what it was like to have gone through that for 10 years and to believe that it was coming to an end and then realize not only did I fail to stop the abuse, but my abuse ended up getting my whole family killed. For now, all signs point to Stocks living out the rest of his life here at Tucker Max, with a lifelong connection to one of the most controversial cases in the state. Stocks tells me he is working on one final appeal to the Supreme Court. He says some details of his abuse were suppressed and weren't factored into his sentencing. He is visited by friends and family about once a month. His grandparents were his most frequent visitors. He says they recently passed away. Back to you.